Hey everybody, welcome back. I am going to be talking to you guys about Fragile X again. Um, today's video is going to be more specific to Fragile X carriers. So if you haven't had the opportunity to see the first video I uploaded about Fragile X Syndrome, I'm going to leave a link down below. So I would suggest you go check that out um, if you aren't really sure what Fragile X is because I go into depth more in that video and also I do explain our family history of Fragile X and how it kind of runs through our genes and such. So I'll go through a couple of things just to refresh your memory because it was a while ago that I did the other video. But um, Fragile X is a genetic condition that causes speech motor skills, and different developmental delays. I do have notes, guys, because <laughs> it's a lot. But anyway, um, my son has Fragile X. He has a full mutation, and I have a pre-mutation, also known as a carrier. So that means that I have the um, affected gene, but it is only pre-mutated, so it only produces a certain amount of repeats and does not cause all of the other effects that a full, a full mutation for Fragile X does cause. So basically, being a carrier, you get tested, um, you could do a blood test. So for me, I was tested at like age 12, I want to say, because my brother had finally been diagnosed. And um, so we kind of just found out through default, I guess. Like, we didn't know what he had when he was younger. We didn't know what, you know, Fragile X even meant when he was even diagnosed with it. So, they suggested that I should get tested just so that I knew in case I wanted to have children later on in life. And here we are. So, one of the things that I wanted to address is being a Fragile X carrier is a little bit different than being um, a carrier of another inherited condition because both male and female can carry this gene and be a carrier. So as far as the males go, um, back to basics, males are XY, females are XX as far as chromosomes go, and this condition is on the X chromosome. So men can pass down this gene to all of their daughters and none of their sons. And they're only pr passing down a pre-mutation. So you're not gonna have a man who's a carrier of Fragile X have a daughter with a full mutation. It will just be the pre-mutation that gets passed on. Whereas a female carrier can pass on a full mutation or a pre-mutation to all of her sons or all of her daughters. It is 50-50, so when, you know, say you're in the situation like I was, I knew that regardless if I had a girl or a boy, it was a 50-50 chance that either or was going to have a full mutation. So just as much of a chance as you have having a boy or having a girl, you have a child with a full mutation of Fragile X being a female carrier. So the way that you would determine if you are a carrier of Fragile X or if you have a pre-mutation or a full mutation would be the count of CGGs on the gene. So normal repeats is up to 45, so you would not be affected. Pre-mutation, which is your carriers, um, 55 to 200 repeats. And anything over 200 repeats is gonna be considered a full mutation. Now, there is a gap between um, the normal and the pre-mutation, which is known as the gray area. And I don't know all that much about it, but they're not considered to have um, Fragile X if you're in between that gray area. So going back to what the difference is between males and females. So <laughs> I had no idea that being a carrier of Fragile X is going to cause issues, I guess, even though I'm not fully affected. Um, just recently, uh, just recently, with all of the testing and the genetics and things like that that I went through with Elias, I really found out the true face of what being a carrier is as far as being a female. So one of the things that they really stressed to me was to consider if I was going to expand my family. 
Um, at this point in my life, I would probably say I wouldn't have any more children just because Elias is a lot of work and he needs a lot of attention. And so as a single parent, I definitely would not want to, um, you know, have another child that one didn't have Fragile X because then all my attention would really be so focused on Elias and getting him when he needs. Um, I wouldn't want them to feel le left out or neglected. and. If I did have another child with Fragile X, I just feel like that would be so difficult to balance both. Many families do have multiple children with Fragile X and, you know, they make it work, um, and which is great. If I had a partner, maybe that would make things different. I don't know. But as far as what goes with the scientific side of it, if I was planning on having more children, they suggested to freeze my eggs. So the reason for this is as a carrier, you could go into premenopause you could have fertility issues and you could also um, have irregular menstrual cycles so there is kind of a concern there I was a little apprehensive about going on birth control after I had my son as well because of this and uh, the way that my doctor explained it to me was you know your mom has been through this she was on birth control not on birth control and still conceived multiple children whatever so She's like, rule of thumb, just go with what is um, consistent within your family. So there are some other things that could be an effect of being a carrier of Fragile X. So I've suffered with depression and anxiety all of my life. And it wasn't until I was like 12 that I even knew I was a carrier and not until I was about 24 that I even knew that a carrier could have all these potential other things going on. And even now I have no idea if this has anything to do with my um, mental illness, but it is possible. So that is something also to keep in mind. So I'm going to stick with the female carrier for now just because there's a lot more information and then I'll go into the mail carriers. So when I was pregnant, I wanted to know if I was going to have a child with Fragile X or not so that I could set up all of the appropriate meetings and doctors and whatnot um, when the baby was born so we weren't behind. That was my personal choice. And as I did mention in my previous video, I'm extremely passionate about encouraging people to do this because that is the way that you're going to help your child. Denial doesn't help anyone. And that's kind of like ripping off the band-aid, but it just is what it is. And that's why I want to make these videos. Not only to show that, you know, this is what it is and spread the awareness of Fragile X, but also to encourage people that are in any kind of similar situation to make sure that you think in the future because if you are thinking about the moment you're going to be stressed out and you're not going to want to make the most rational decision but if you think about the future the the sooner that you can get them any kind of support the better and that's how it is with any child um, or any human for that matter so I'm just I'm just throwing it out there but anyway so there's two procedures that you can do to find out if your child is affected by the gene so the first one is amniocentesis which is what I did um, you can have this procedure performed between um, 15 and 20 weeks I believe or 15 plus I believe that I had mine done around 20 weeks when I found out the sex of my baby. Um, so what they do is they insert a needle into your belly button and they suck out some of the amnio fluid and they test it. So the other one that I didn't even know existed because my doctor's office didn't even mention it um, is CVS and that stands for Ionic Villus Sampling. I think I'm saying that right. Um, I'll put that down here so you guys you guys can read I don't know if I can read but you guys can read um, and you can have that procedure done between 10 and 12 weeks which would seem like you know the better option because you know the quicker you know the more options you have whatever however you want to feel about that um, I think that if I had known I probably would have wanted to do this um, because it was sooner but there is a bit more to it. A catheter or a needle is used to retrieve tissue from the placenta to be tested. 
So if you do find yourself in this situation, um, those are the two options. And I guess it would be just something that you would discuss with your family and your health care provider what's best for you. But I do highly suggest that if you do know that you're a carrier, that you do find out. Regular genetic testing is procedure with people who are pregnant anyway. Um, then you also do have the option to see a genetic counselor if you have any concerns, even before you conceive, and they will test um, to see, you know, what you may or may not carry. And Fragile X is actually now starting to be one of those things that they test for. I know my friend right now, um, she's pregnant. She's due on my birthday, actually, um, in October. And she told me that when they did the genetic testing that Fragile X was on the list of one of the things that they just test for now, which is amazing. Because like I said, when my brother was born, you didn't even know what it was. You didn't even know what it was. So I'm glad that that has at least improved and we are making strides. So that is awesome. So that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to say about um, female carriers in this video. So we're gonna move on to the male carriers. Um, one of the things that is most common for a male carrier, Fragile X, is to get a tremor. Um, so that's just like uncontrollable shaking of the hands or such. Um, it does develop with age. And then they also can have issues with um, balance, which is, oh boy, I didn't write it down. Anexia? Anexia? Something like that. Uh -oh. All right, another. Something that I did mention in my um, previous video was that my grandfather is the one that passed down this gene to us from through my mother to me to my brother to my son. <laughs> and his father. I don't know who Elias is talking to out there, but shh. Uh -huh. my grandfather's grandfather had. Um, been diagnosed with Parkinson's and that is one of the things that it has similar um, characteristics so back then it would make sense to be diagnosed that way but it could have been a misdiagnosis of being a carrier of fragile X syndrome so there are still things that you know you do need to be aware of even if you are a carrier and you don't plan on having children um, anyway so other things that I just recently found, and I think that when I originally did my research, like way back in high school, um, I don't think that these things had been released yet or discovered or researched, I don't know, because I don't remember ever seeing anything like this. So men can also experience um, some personality mood swings, difficulties with learning new things. Um, so that's kind of like the emotional side for them, um, whereas women have the depression, anxiety, things like that. So the way that I'm taking this is that socially it's more expected for a woman to be more depressed, anxiety prone, things like that, and it kind of like heightens that, and whereas men can be more aggressive and a little bit more um, easily stern up, so it kind of like plays off on that. I could be completely wrong. That's not a fact. That's my opinion from what I've read. Um, and I just feel like all of these things are just so important for people to know. Even if you aren't, you know, affected by this in particular, you know, if you're going through something similar and your child hasn't even been diagnosed yet, you know, you have to know what's out there in order to know what avenues that you can, you know, look to for your options for answers. So that is everything that I have um, to discuss about Fragile X Carriers for today. If you guys have any questions at all whatsoever, please leave them down below. I will get back to you. And um, I hope that this was informative and I hope that it gave you guys something to think about. I do also want to just recognize that all of my information does come from the National Fragile X Foundation website. I will leave a link down below. And that is also the organization in which we raise money for um, and we have had a walk in our hometown for three years now. And finally this year we got past um, our, I want to say goal, that's not. <laughs> We finally surpassed $6,000 and we raised about 62 and some change, so that is awesome. And I'm super excited to see what the future holds for 
um, the Fragile X community, and I will keep you guys updated. I am going to start making um, a playlist for Fragile X. I actually named it the Fragile X Files, and um, I'm going to be more consistent with uploading videos to inform you guys about the different aspects of Fragile X. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> He's like literally in there talking to himself. Oh, like mother like son.